YLC TV, what is up? The Rock Church is in the building. We are so delighted to be here today and share a word with you from our worship experience. Yes, yes. We are kicking off our brand new series called Reignite. Yes. Follow the fire is what we're going to kick it off with today. So we are so excited. This is your chance to like and share and get all your folks that you love to come in and tune in right now for this amazing worship experience that's about to take place. I'm waking up tired, pouring out without being poured into detrimental decisions, parasitic relationships that are devoid of reciprocity. I got questions with no answers. What do you run to when you're running from? How can I be affected without becoming infected? Distracted by devices, spiritually spent, emotionally exhausted, physically fatigued. My passion has subsided. Running on empty. Comparison has me in competition with everyone except the one in the middle. I want to go from existing to living. I want to go from pretending to contending. I need to be reinvigorated. I need to be reinvented. I need to be reignited. Reignite your fervor, reignite your first love. I need you to get lost for the next few moments. And God says, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. God, if you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. God says, I'm attracted to your brokenness. Draw nigh unto God and I'll draw nigh unto you. Somebody shall reignite me, God. Say it from your spirit, reignite me, God. Welcome to the Rock Church. Look all around you and say, what's up? Say good morning. Say what's up to everybody. Everybody who's watching online, if you're in person, go crazy for the people online. If you're online, I need you to break your thumbs and go crazy for the people in person. Rock Church, I am excited about this series. Can you believe we're in November already? Yeah, yeah. For anybody who's felt like your faith has waned, you felt like you've become complacent, lethargic, God says this series is for you. Sharing is caring. Evangelize. Click the share button. Because of the click of a button, you all have expanded our reach to over 2,000 people per week on average. Let's get it. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. If you're next to someone who doesn't have a device, it's all good. It'll be on the screen. Exodus 13, 21 and 22. Then it says the Lord went ahead of them. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with the pillar of cloud and provided light at night with the pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. I want to speak to you for a few moments from the subject, follow the fire. Uh, Look up and down your row and tell somebody, just follow the fire. That's all you got to do. If you have any level of expectation, put your device down. I saw one old school player walked in with a real Bible. I felt like we had a church. I saw you, man. Yeah, yeah. Put your Bible down and give God a praise of expectation. Follow the fire. You may be seated in God's house. 
My wife asked me this morning, uh, low-key, I hope they can't hear this. She said, um, our son wants a Nintendo 64. And, and, and that's already problematic because I'm like, we're not even at Thanksgiving and we're already having Christmas conversations. Like, like we're still in pumpkin spice season and y'all are already trying to get into the eggnog vibe already. And, and, and what I don't like is that this current generation, the games that they play, they require so much. Like, like even Apple, they, they give you the phone but don't give you the charger. Like, 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 in order for this to function, I need a charger, but you, I gotta buy the phone and I gotta buy the charger. Like, 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 I like old school games that don't require no assembly. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, old school games. Anybody know any old school games that you used to play where you didn't have no ball, all you had was your imagination? Like, like, I'm talking about like old school games like Tag. Yeah, like the premise of Tag is quite simple. You're it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. I, I, I like old school games that have no assembly required. Anybody remember That's My Car? Like, like you literally just sit in one spot, and as cars go by, you just point them out and be like, Oh, that's my car. Yeah. yeah, you missed it. That game was prophetic. That game was teaching you how to speak things that be not as though they were. That game was telling you when you see it, you say it into manifestation. Uh, a low key, low key, another game that was cool was called Follow the Leader. Yeah, Follow the Leader. The premise is quite simple. If you remain in close proximity to the one who's giving the instruction, if you stay close enough to hear them, and you aren't distracted, you'll win the game. Did you catch me? If you stay close enough to the leader and you aren't distracted by other voices, you will eventually win the game. You have to fight for your focus. The same rules apply and follow the leader naturally that apply spiritually. Maybe you're losing the game of life because you've allowed yourself to follow other voices. Maybe you're not winning in every area because you are not following the word of God. Literally, the cheat code is in Deuteronomy. You missed what I just said. I said the cheat code for life, it's housed in Deuteronomy. The Bible says, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord God will set you high above all nations of the world. You will experience all, not some, all these blessings if you obey the Lord. Like, here, here it is. If you obey God, expect this to happen. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. Okay, you missed it. Uh, uh, you, you, I said your children and your crops will be blessed. The same way you used to play, that's my car, you need to learn how to play, that's my word. You missed what I just said. <laughs> And when, in other words, when you see a word that goes by that you need to apply to your life, you need to reach up and grab it out the atmosphere and say, that's my word. Somebody type in the chat, that's my word. Uh, your offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and bread boards will be blessed wherever you go. Whatever you do, you'll be blessed. I'm in the wrong church today. I'm going to take this down to another church. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. Tell somebody, you better be nice to me. Lean over and tell them, you better be nice to me. Uh, 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 they will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter in seven. In other words, when the enemy comes in one way, he'll flee seven ways. The Lord will guarantee. You see, whenever I buy something that's expensive, I don't operate in scarcity. They ask me, do I want the warranty? I always pay extra for the warranty because if anything goes wrong, I can take it back to the manufacturer. I'm trying to tell you, if your life doesn't look like what God promised, you have a guarantee. You can take it back to the manufacturer and say, God, I need you to give me a new one. Is there anybody who believes that I have a word from God and it's guaranteed? The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do. And will fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he's giving you. If you obey the commands of the Lord, your God, and walk in his ways. Somebody, tell somebody, walk it out. No, no, go 2,000 and tell them, walk it out and walk it out and walk it out and walk. West side, walk it out. Yeah, Crockett, walk it. Tell them, walk it out. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. Blessings. 
You and with many children, numerous livestock and abundant crops, the Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in heavens and will bless all the work you do. You missed your shout. God says, I'm about to make it rain on you. Ah! Is there anybody who's felt like you've been in a drought? Is there anybody who's felt parched? Is there anybody who felt unproductive? God says, I will make it rain on you. Stuff that was dried up, I'll bring it back to life. Stuff that was dead, I will revive it. Tell somebody he about to make it rain on me. 13, if you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will always be on top and never at the bottom. You must not turn away from any of the commands I'm giving you today, nor follow after other gods and worship them. New Testament equivalent. Matthew 4 and 18. One day, Jesus was walking along the seashore, and he saw two brothers, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, throwing their net into the water. They fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, hey, look, come follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. In other words, what you studied for, naturally, I'm about to upgrade you from fishing for fish to fishing for people. Follow me, and I will upgrade you to another level. At some point, we've become accustomed to being distant from God. At some point, we start to take God more casually. At some point, we replace the voice of God with other voices. I've learned that nobody talks crazier to me than I talk to myself. Isn't it ironic that everyone else can tell you how well you did, but as soon as you get in the car, other voices will pop up and telling you everything you didn't do. Isn't it ironic that no matter what you do, there's a voice inside that keeps telling you what you're not and that you're not good enough. I need you to tell that voice to shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Today, 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 let me give you some context. Today we're encountering a book called Exodus. Like the book Exodus, intrinsic in the definition of Exodus is that we serve a God who provides exits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Exodus, the book in and of itself, it lets me know that wherever you are, whatever you're in, when you serve God, he'll always provide an exit. Like, like if you're dealing with depression, God says, I got an exit for that. If you're dealing with doubt and discouragement, God says, I got an exit for that. With every, I just got a text message, with every temptation, there's a way of escape. Lean over and tell somebody, just look for your exit. Just look for your exit. Yeah, there are several emergency exits in this situation. There are two in the front, there's one over each wing, and there's one in the, in the rear. Uh, 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 should your situation get turbulent, uh, look down at the floor light, because the light will guide you to your exit. Ye yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because God has an exit for me. Before you got in it, God says, I already planned your way out of it. You missed what I just said. Before you walked in the situation, God said, I already created an exit out of it. Pastor, I don't believe you. The Bible calls him the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Before Adam and Eve got caught up in sin, God said, I already planned a way out. So what I need you to learn how to do is not shout when you come out of it, but you got to learn how to shout while you're in it. Because if you shout while you're in it, he'll lead you to what you're going to do when you get out of it. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice who says it's my season to exit? It's my season to exit drama into peace. I'm exiting faith to another level of manifestation. It's my season to exit. Children of Israel, they need deliverance, so God sends them a deliverer. They need deliverance, but God says, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to do it through you. And what if I told you you're what you've been waiting on? <laughs> uh, 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 God, 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 I need you to get me out. He says, all right, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to do it through you. So, so, so what I want you to see is that Moses' life is divided into periods of 40. Yeah, if you look at his life, 40, 40, 40. 40 is a period of testing. It rained on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. The first test is can you, can you handle 
obscurity? Can you handle uh, not being seen? Can you handle not being recognized? How you perform in public is directly correlated to how you practice in private. Yeah, yeah. The way you show up on your job is directly in proportion to how you show up at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the God of the miraculous, but don't overlook, he's also the God of the mundane. Come here, come here. You only feel legitimized if you have something that's post worthy. But I'm telling you, what you post is based upon the stuff you don't post. I'm trying to tell you that you can be gifted out here and get affirmation from people, but when you know intrinsically that the life that you live is not commensurate to the one that you portray, there will be too much of a gap. I need God to reconcile the gap and make me synonymous in public with who I am in private. There, there's a thin line. There's a thin line. You got to evaluate your routine because there's a thin line between self-care and self-absorption. You ever got somebody who's practicing too much self-care? <laughs> Again? Lean over and tell somebody, you ain't done nothing since the last time you cared for yourself. <laughs> self-care is not quitting every time you feel pain and discomfort. Uh, watch this, watch this. Self-care, self-care is not wallowing in your feelings. Like, like, literally, when I'm running, I'm running to get past my pain. First couple weeks, I would be running, and as soon as I feel pain, I'd be like, oh, that's it. That's all right. All right. All right. Do I have anybody else who's ever done exercise with your cell phone and called it multitasking? No, no, no. You got neither thing done because you did not focus. No, the goal is not to run. You ever see people going live and they work out? Let me never tell your neighbor. He's talking to you, not me right here. You are getting nothing done but exercising your ego. Out here working out, <laughs> getting it. Your heart rate is not moving whatsoever. You're doing, you're doing nothing right now in this moment. What I need you to understand is that you got to develop some spiritual disciplines. No, no, no. Come on now. At this point, you should not be playing Las Vegas Russian roulette dice with your spirituality. Like you too grown to have everything as a negotiable. Yeah, at this stage in your life, you need to say, this is what I do. This is who I am when it comes to my spiritual disciplines. Like coming to church, you should not be applauded. Sundays are for Jesus. Like he gave me six other days. If Chick-fil-A can shut down on Sunday, then how come you open? Lean over and tell somebody Sunday is for Jesus, player. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, one day this week, one day this week, one day this week, let me put myself on blast. I literally got ready to exercise. I was like, oh, I don't have my AirPods. <sighs> Holy Spirit must not want me to go today. <laughs> oh. And then, then I was like, oh, I don't have my watch. The calories won't count. I have nothing to put on my stories. And my Holy Spirit was like, if you don't get your tail out this car and run them five miles like you do every other day, what if I told you I gained more physically and spiritually the day I didn't have no devices? What if I told you God download where he wants the church to be in 2022 in 22 minutes? Y'all miss what I just said. Because I was devoid of devices and distractions. You got to get your spiritual disciplines. Maybe you don't hear God's voice because you got other stuff turned up too loud. God says, I need you to take the remote control of your life and press mute on everything else. Because I... I can, you can, you, if you would turn them down, you would hear that I've been talking the whole time. And my sheep know my voice, and a stranger, they will not follow. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. I need you to get your spiritual disciplines on lock. Yeah, literally, spiritual, what are spiritual disciplines, Pastor? Things that I do that are non-negotiable. These are things that I do that aren't a phase. They're who I am. Like prayer is a spiritual discipline. I need to listen to God, and prayer is not you doing all the talking. 
Sometimes prayer is you falling back and saying, God, talk to me and put me up on strategies on how I can go. Fasting is a spiritual discipline. Yeah, it's so ingrained on me that when my wife and I be on vacation, we be like, you know you can, take the, you can have this one off. You know you good. Part of me be like, Lord, are you sure? Because it's a spiritual discipline. Prayer, fasting, reading my word is a spiritual discipline. Some of you all are more disciplined with coffee than you are with Christ. <laughs> Pastor, I am no good. I am no good till I get my coffee. I am no good till I get my macchiato and my decaf. I am no good. Don't even come for me. Don't even talk to me. What if you had that same attitude about your Christ? I am no good until I get on my knees and acknowledge him in all my ways and he directs my path. I am no good until I say, God, which way do you want me to go today? I am no good until I get in his presence because in his presence is fullness of joy. Yeah, I need you, I need you to develop some mental disciplines. Why are you always hijacked mentally? Yeah, mentally, mentally, you numb yourself out. You can watch a season of Netflix, but you fall asleep on a podcast. And the devil doesn't want you to know it because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Like currently, as of today, I'm reading two books right now. I'm in two mastermind groups that give me homework weekly because I got to stimulate my mind. Some of y'all are going to be rocking with me for 20 years. I can't run out of new stuff. Physical disciplines. Yeah, God, God, my body is the temple. Yeah, yeah, my body is the temple. Watch this, emotional disciplines. Yeah, 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 emotional discipline, self-awareness. What are your healthy outlets to be all of you? Or have you isolated yourself with just people who affirm you so you don't have anybody close enough to you to call out your blind spots? And here's the irony. You've been at Chuck E. Cheese playing whack-a-mole. Let me work on my spiritual. No, 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 no. Let me work on my physical. No, no, no. Let me, let me work on my mental. No, no, no. Oh, Jesus. Let me work on my emotion. What if I told you they're all interconnected? Oh, God. Uh, have you ever noticed that when one goes awry, they all go awry? I wish I could paint the picture for you. When I'm disconnected spiritually, I'm off mentally. Because now I'm thinking crazy. They looked at me sideways. But if I would have prayed, I wouldn't care about how you looked at me. Uh, 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 now, that, now that I'm off mentally, I misperceive God, I misperceive myself, and I misperceive other people. Yeah, now that I'm off mentally, my perception is off, now I'm depressed emotionally. God, why did I cuss her out? God, why did I, why did I come at them crazy? God, I always be messing up. I need something to make me feel better. Let me go eat something. Because, because if I sit in this parking lot at In-N-Out or Chick-fil-A and eat myself, I'll be good. And for some of you all, it's not Chick-fil-A. It might be sliding in the DMs of a person who will make your body feel good but not make your soul feel good. And the irony is that they're all, everybody shout, interconnected. But what if I told you if you get your spirit right, if you get your spirit on lock, that your whole life will be fluctuating, but you will be walking in a space of stability that you've never experienced before, where you will be able to declare like Job, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Your mind will be set and you will say he will keep me in perfect peace if my mind is stayed on him. You will be out there running and you will feel better physically. When you feel better physically, you feel better emotionally. God says, I don't want to just get part of your life right. 
right. I want to get all your life right. Lean over and tell somebody my whole life about to be popping. Go ahead and tell them. Yeah, yeah. From, from my whole, you missed what I just said. My spirit is going to be right. My mind's going to be right. My body going to be right. You should have shouted right there. My whole body going to be right. Summer 22. Watch out for your girl. Watch out for your boy. My whole life is about to be right. If you believe it, stand up and sit back down and shout. I know that's right. Yeah. God says he wants to transform everything concerning me. All right, I got to get out of here. Exodus 3, 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of the bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though, come close, the bush was engulfed in flames. It didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. No takers. The fire, the first thing the fire wants to do is bring you in alignment. Catch it, catch it. The bush and the fire are in alignment. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And cloven tongues, like as of fire, sat upon each of them. The fire wants to sit on you and bring your life into alignment. When you go to the mechanic, they tell you if your car starts to drift and you're not controlling the drift, it means you need an alignment. I want to talk to somebody who's been drifting for about six months. And you can't control the drift. You keep veering into dispositions and people. You keep veering into stuff you don't want to go. You keep veering into mindsets you don't want to be in. God says, get the fire back. It'll put you back in alignment. Yeah, yeah. God says, I want, I want to reignite you. I want to give you a fire. Watch me. That's not contingent on how you feel. <sighs> uh, how come you only feel good on the 1st and the 15th? Uh, chances are your fire is connected to external things. But grandma said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I want my fire to be so strong, you don't know how I feel. Uh, 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 the fire, the fire burned the bush and Moses was never the same. You missed it. When Moses experienced this first fire, he was never the same. Yes, you will experience fluctuations in life, but your fire will never be extinguished. Do I have anybody who's been connected to God for a minute and you've thought some crazy stuff? You fell off a couple times, but every time you tried to leave it alone, the fire kept bringing you back. You've been through hell and high water, through setback, through comebacks, and you know that it was the fire that sustained me. About to go old school, I'm gonna lose the whole church. In 1980, Walter Hawkins dropped a song called What is, Whatever It Is. Dad, they don't know nothing about this right here. Uh, my dad, my dad prayed for us. We had a stereo, and the stereo speaker was big as me. Uh, so my dad went to Radio Shack. Y'all don't know nothing about this. Just Google all this stuff I'm talking about. A uh, 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 Circuit City. And he had the nerve to get one cord. Gee, you know what I'm talking about. You nodding. And he plugged the cord in. It wasn't no Bluetooth. I didn't know what no Bluetooth was. And he rolled the speaker all the way to the kitchen where he was going to wash dishes. <laughs> he put the A track. Then he moved up. Then he put the record. And the song said, whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. It makes me love all my enemies. And it won't let me be ashamed to tell the world that I've been born again. Pastor, what is this series for? Because I'm tired of looking at dry Christians. I'm tired of looking at Christians who lost the fire. When I look in your eyes, I want to see the fire. When I look in your soul, I want to feel the fire. If I'm cold when I get next to you, I should warm up. If I'm broke when I get next to you, I should feel something. If I was depressed when I walked in, when I walk out because I was next to you, I should feel something. Lean over and tell somebody, I I got the fire. <laughs> Touch seven people and tell them I got the fire. I got the fire. It's contagious. I got the fire. It's connected to me. I got the fire. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll never be the same because I got the fire. 
Moses, you go into another level from here. Moses, I'm about to upgrade you from pastoring sheep to pastoring people. So don't despise the season of pastoring sheep. Because everything that you need to learn on this level is going to assist you on the next level. When Moses, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God, I wish I could preach it like I feel it. God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am. So I teach our ministers, whenever you read the scripture, you have to interrogate the text. Yeah, I'm low-key like Stabler and Benson, Law and Order, season 23. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to interrogate the text. I looked at the text, and I said, why does he keep calling people twice? Uh, he called Abraham, Abraham. Samuel, Samuel. Moses, Moses. Holy Spirit said, the first time I call you is to get your attention. Second time I call you is to give you your assignment. Jesus, uh, 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 well, you, you, we, you will lose your fire when God doesn't have your attention and you're not walking in your assignment. Come here, come here. God speaks quietly first in a whisper. And it's better for you to respond when he's whispering. Respond when I whisper. I'm very persuasive and I'll disrupt your life to get your attention because I'm a jealous God and I don't want you to have other gods before me. When you needed a job, I was there for you. But when I blessed you with the job, you forgot about me. When you said, give me a, a relationship, I blessed you, but you put the relationship above me. And now I'm frustrated. I give you life. It's in me that you live, you move, and have your being, but you forgot about me. So I'll get persuasive. Ask Jonah what happens when you don't hear him on the first to go around. Jonah, I need you to go save these people. That's your assignment. I'm going the other way. Okay. God will create storms. God, I feel it. God will, God will create storms. He'll make you throw stuff overboard. He will even let you find yourself in the belly of a fish to get you to say, yes, Lord. I'd rather give him my yes. Because he's saying, I'm going to get my yes regardless. I'd rather give him my yes than him make me say yes. Is there anybody here who says, God, you can have my yes? When God calls you Rock Church, you better answer. Stop pressing ignore. Stop sending God to voicemail. God says, I'm calling you to represent. Say what Moses said. Here am I. I'm calling you to be a light in your family. Here am I. I'm calling you to be a boss and change the game for your family spiritually, emotionally, financially. Somebody shout, here I am. Here I am. Three and five. God told him, wait a second, don't come no closer. Take off your shoes. Yeah, take off your shoes, Moses. Take off your shoes. Because where you stand, and this is holy ground. Yeah, when the fire comes, there has to be a sense of reverence. I'm concerned because we've lost our reverence for God. It's dangerous when you become familiar with sacred things. It's dangerous when it's just church. It's dangerous to, I'll get to God when my schedule allows not knowing it's God who allows you to have a schedule. <laughs> there has to be a level of reverence. You can't, you can't imagine how proud I was during worship because what I felt in this room 
was a sense of reverence. Yeah, that I don't come to church to be entertained. I come to give him reverence. Yet look at how selfless church culture is. We come late to the part that blesses him. But we show up on time for the part where he blesses us. I got to get my reverence back. Yeah, 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 yeah. How come you can't, how come you're not available? Because I have a meeting. With who? Me, myself, and God. Because there's a sense of reverence. The text says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. 3, 6, and 10. When Moses heard this, he covered his face and he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I want to talk to somebody who feels invisible. I want to talk to somebody who feels like, God, you're not paying attention. God said to Moses, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I came down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites now live. Look! The cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. Come here. Verse number seven acknowledges the suffering. Verse number eight, God says, I'm coming down to rescue you. He then gives them a description of the promised land. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Verse number seven acknowledges the suffering of the past. Verse number eight tells you about the deliverance that's coming in the present. Then he gives you a forecast of the promised land of your future. Did y'all catch this? The first six, here's all the pain you've been through. Here's all the drama you've been through. Seven, I'm coming down to deliver you. Next verse, the promised land looked like this. What if I'm telling you your problem is you stuck in verse six? You rehearse the pain of your past so frequently that it's now become pain in your present. Like your history is, it's that. It's literally history at this juncture. But you've attached your identity to your history that now things that happened 20, 30 years ago, they're still affecting you now. At some point, the reality of the promised land, God help me preach, has to become bigger than the reality of what you experienced in Egypt. Ah, did you catch it? You keep saying, that's just the way I am. That's how I was raised. That's what I went through. I went through divorce. That was 40 years ago. They didn't been through two divorces since then. I was rejected. What? When? When I was six. What? Watch this. It wasn't your responsibility when it happened to you but it's your responsibility if you allow it to keep impacting you. Oh, God, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Let me make this make sense. Um, 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 I've been at the pool for 38 years. Every time I want to get healed, people cut me in line. Do you want to get well? I've been at the pool for 38 years, and every time the water's in trouble, somebody step in front. Do you want to get well, though? Do you want to get well, though? Okay, look, rise and get up. You missed what I just said. Take up your bed and walk. God is showing you that your healing is not contingent on a season. It's not contingent on the troubling of a water. It's contingent on your mindset. And the moment you want to be well is the moment you can get up and pick up some stuff that you've been laying on for all your life. God says you're about to carry what used to carry you. Depression used to carry you. You're about to pick it up and carry it. Fear used to carry you. You're about to pick it up and carry it. Your mat is your evidence of your deliverance. Vashon, stand up real quick. Stand up real quick. Uh, two weeks ago, Vashon was on his way to church. He was on his way to church and got into a car accident. And it wasn't just a, a regular car accident. It flipped over four times. I'm talking to him on the phone in the afternoon. I said, where's your daughter? Here I am. I said, why ain't you in the hospital? 
He said, Pastor, I was on my way to church. So right now, I don't have to ask if God's a deliverer. I don't have to ask because I got evidence. Ah! There's some of y'all who are letting the devil kill you off of speculation when you need to let the devil know I'm evidence that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm evidence that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Tell somebody I got evidence. I, you on the wrong road. Link behind you and tell him I got evidence that he'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. I got evidence that... Somebody shout, I got evidence. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going too long. Here's your assignment. Your assignment is to go home this week and ask God to give you a glimpse of your promised land. Your assignment is to get in prayer and say, God, just give me a glimpse of my promised land. Yeah, yeah, because if, if at some point in your life, the push of the past has to pale in comparison to the pull of your future. Yeah, at some point, what is possible has to become more real to you than what is behind you. Ask God to give you a glimpse of your promised land. Yeah, God will say, oh, I got something different for you. Yeah, I got something different for you. In your promised land, I see you whole spiritually. Yeah, I see you whole spiritually. You're going to be so connected to me that it's going to flow throughout you in every environment. You're not going to compartmentalize me. You're going to feel Christ in every space that you enter in. It's going to flow throughout all of your relationships. Your children are going to feel the Holy Spirit when they encounter you just at breakfast in the morning. It's going to flow to every area of your life. The Holy Spirit, you got to get a glimpse of your promised land. You don't see where I see you mentally. Mentally, you ain't, it ain't always going going to be like this. Mentally, you're not going to be scrolling and comparing yourself to other people. You're not going to be measuring your worth by stuff. You're not going to be measuring your worth by likes and popularity. You're going to be, you're going to be so whole mentally, and when you get whole, you're going to be the Harriet Tubman of your family, and you're going to free everybody into emotional stability. You don't know what I see for you. I see you coming out of this. I see you financially prosperous, and when you get new stuff, you're not just going to spend it on depreciating assets. You're going to spend it in some stuff that can last generation after generation. I see you in the promised land. So don't praise me like you did in Egypt. Praise me like you're going to praise me when I get to the land that flows with milk and honey. Lean over and tell somebody that's an Egypt shout. Tell them that's an Egypt shout. God says, I want to hear a promised land shout. How you going to act when your mind is right? How you going to act when your body's healed? How you going to act when your children come home? How you going to act when God fills us with the Holy Ghost? Give God a promised land. Give me five minutes and I'm out. Five and I'm out. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. After Moses goes back and forth, God, how you going to use me? How you going to use me, God? You, God, I, you want me to talk to millions of people? The problem is, is I, the problem is, uh, laugh at me, God. Come on, God. He said, God says, God says, God says, I know you're insecure. And when Moses goes through a lineage of things that is wrong with him, God doesn't give him a motivational speech. God doesn't say, get back in there, tiger. <laughs> sure you can. He don't say that one time. God only responds with, but I'll be with you. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Okay, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Go slow so I can get to this. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll go. But who you want me to tell them that sent me then? What you want me to say? Because when I go to Egypt, it's polytheistic. In other words, they serve a bunch of other gods. So when I come and pull up, they're going to say, who you represent? The sun God, the moon God. What you want me to tell them? You tell them I am. Huh? Jehovah, covenant keeping. 
You tell them I am, because watch this, you're going to need me to be a bunch of different things. So you just tell them I am, and whatever the situation requires, that's what I'm going to step in and be. You tell them I'm Jehovah, and if you need provision, I'll be Jireh. You tell them I'm Jehovah, and if you need peace, I'll be Shalom. You God help me. You tell them I'm Jehovah, and whatever you need me to be, I'll I need him to be peace. He said, I am. I need him to be bread when I'm hungry. He said, I am. I need him to be water when I'm thirsty. He says, I am. I need him to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He said, I am. Give three people a high five and tell them, I am. I am. Somebody just got a glimpse of their pain and then got a glimpse of his presence. Somebody got a glimpse of what they went through and got a glimpse of who he is. Whatever you need me to be, I am. So between, I'm so cutting across the field right now. So between chapter 3. And our text, oh, that was the introduction. Here go the text. Between chapter 3 and chapter 13, he gives him a bunch of scenarios. So he pulls up on Pharaoh, and he gives him a bunch of plagues. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? He turns the Nile into blood, and dead fish start popping up. Not the dead fish over there. The, the real dead fish. <laughs> like 20 people caught that. Millions of frogs come from the river and start invading people's houses. A wave of gnats. Like one fly come in, I'm dead. You ever have a fly in your car? Ah, just take me, take me, Jesus. A wave of gnats. A wave of gnats. And you ever think somebody watch you when you be fighting the fly by yourself? How crazy you look? You should have saw me this week. One guy, I said, Jesus, Jesus. I didn't even say Jesus. Jesus. A wave of gnats come through. Lice, flies, locusts, hail, death, born of first, death of firstborn sons. And Pharaoh says, no. I'm not letting them go. I wish you would read the text when you get home. The Bible says, but God hardened Pharaoh's heart. In other words, sometimes God will allow the trial to persist because he wants to get greater glory out of your life. So sometimes God sends your growth in wrapping paper called opposition. So God will allow you. God says, I wasn't never trying to absolve you from Pharaoh. I was trying to take you through Pharaoh. And you over here praying the prayer, God, get me out of it. God says, I'm not getting you out of it until you get what you were supposed to get while you was in it. So then it says, when Pharaoh finally let the people go. I'm in the wrong church. I'm about to quit, y'all. Look, it's been nice. I love y'all. But I'm about to Chris Brown deuce, y'all. Because you just read that they've been through 400 years of oppression. Over 400 years of suppression. 400 years of bondage. And what you just did right here is what you do in your life. The moment you get delivered is the moment you get amnesia. How come deliverance was so valued when you was in bondage, but the moment you get free is the moment you forget about how much you prayed for this? What if I told you the life you got today is the life you dreamed of having in 2010, and you're going to sit here and be cute and want more? God says, when am I ever going to be enough for you? All you do is complain. Is there anybody who says, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in to be content? On a bad day, he's still a good God. So I'm going to read it again for the real. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philistine territory. Here's the punchline. Even though that was the shortest route <laughs> to the promised land, God said if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and go back to Egypt. 
God says the shortest route ain't always the best route. Stop trying to ways and Google Maps your way out of this. There's some necessary traffic that I need you to get in. Because there's some necessary character I need you to get for where I'm taking you. Shortcuts can cut short your development. Did you catch me? The world is filled with shortcuts. There's a shortcut for weight loss. Pastor, I ain't messing with the gym. I was up late night eating Doritos, and I saw an infomercial say that if I put this belt on, it'll do the sit-ups for me. <laughs> Only reason I caught that one out because I thought about that one. I was like, for real? <laughs> there are shortcuts to everything. Shortcuts to weight loss. Shortcuts to hair growth. Look down your row and say, I see you took some shortcuts. Go ahead and tell everybody on your row. All right. <laughs> A lot of shortcuts in, in our community. It's a lot of short. Listen! Shortcuts. Stop laughing, Dre. I'm seeing you in the back. Shortcuts. Shortcuts to degrees. Who do you want operating on you? The doctor who took the long route or the one who took a shortcut? Who do you want operating on your soul? The one who bought clergy attire on, on sale online or the one who bathed themselves in prayer and fasting and studies to show themselves approved? There's shortcuts to gain followers. There's shortcuts to everything. But I'm trying to tell you, resist the shortcut. God said if I send them the short way, they're going to lose it the first battle they see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them a long way. And the long way does not look like it makes, success, like it makes sense. But I'm not trying to give you short-term success. I'm trying to bless you with sustainable success. Come here. Did you hear what I said? God, I'm not trying to give you short-term Instagram story 24-hour success. I'm trying to give you permanent long-term success. Can I give you the play? It's Christmas time coming. So don't let the pandemic and your feelings punk you into going in debt like you do every year to buy a bunch of gifts that they're going to forget about by March. Lean over and tell him, dang, Pastor, will you get out of my Amazon cart right now? Will you get out of my business? Will you, will you get out of my cart? And then by April, you waiting on a breakthrough called a tax return. So why don't this year we invest in our family? Why don't this year I buy you some stuff that you can't play with now, but some stuff that's going to buy you 10 things you could have played with later? Why don't we put the value on us being together? Why don't we put the value over millions of people died in a pandemic and we still here? So if God don't give us nothing under the tree, I'm so grateful that we here to smell the tree that's in the house. If they go the path of least resistance, here, I'm, I'm done. If they go the path of least resistance, their past will follow them into the promised land. So they have to follow the fire. The first fire at the bush, it ignited them. But this next fire is going to reignite them. And if I'm going to take you by following the fire, it's not going to make sense. It's not going to make sense. It made sense to go the shorter route. This route doesn't make sense. But don't follow your intellect on this one. Follow the fire. Because you see here, God sees here. So what makes sense to you here <laughs> pales in comparison to what God sees that makes sense here. So what I want you to do is just follow the fire. Well, Pat, well God, the fire didn't got me in front of a Red Sea. I knew I messed up following God. Look at me. I got Pharaoh behind me and a Red Sea in front of me. Ah, oh, I knew I messed up serving God. Celibate ain't nobody, still nobody checking for me. Oh, man. 
Oh my goodness, that message just blessed me. Powerful, powerful. If it blessed you, this is the time for you to go ahead and give. Yes, so right now you have the opportunity to give. I can truly speak for myself that by my giving, I have been able to see the fruit of my giving. God has provided for me in so many ways and has exceeded my expectations in terms of, you know, work, bonuses, yes. raises. I mean, God is truly in the blessing business just by me simply giving on my tithe and giving in faith and knowing that God is my source and not my resource. Amen.